This episode of Let's Argue About Plants is brought to you by Bluestone Perennials, a second generation, nationally renowned mail order nursery. Bluestone offers over 1,400 varieties of perennials, grasses, ground covers, and shrubs for shipment throughout the US. All plants are grown in natural fiber, biodegradable pots that plant directly into the soil. And all plants are 100% guaranteed. Visit bluestoneperennials.com today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Argue About Plants, the podcast for people who love plants. Just not always the same ones. Uh, I'm Steve Aiken. I'm Danielle Sherry. We're both from Fine Gardening Magazine. And today, Steve, we're going to talk about fragrant plants. And we yes. were just talking about we got to get in a calm, soothing frame of mind in this kind of chaotic world we're living in and talk mm -hmm. about the smooth, cool lovely sensations of smelly plants. <laughs> okay, so so while you're in that calm state, Danielle, it's just probably a good time for me to tell you that uh, as bad as I am with color, uh, that's about how bad I am with aroma. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fragrance guy, you know. Um, as long as it doesn't smell bad, it's, it's fine to me. Okay, um, all right. And, and, and can I just ask you for one favor during this episode? Don't say anything. It smells like cat pee. Can I ask you for another favor during, <laughs> during this episode? Uh, just just don't ask me what it smells like. Because oh, okay. I, there, there, there are two smells for me, like good and bad, you know? Really? So, like yeah. not like sweet and spicy or I like... Can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't compete on that level. Like it's just really? like, it, it smells good or it smells bad. That's pretty much it. Like, you know. Okay. All right. Like, it, it, it smells it, good. It smells bad. Yeah, it, smell, it, 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 it smells good, like uh, like floor cleaner, um, like that's <laughs> that's good, you know. Or, or it smells bad, like soccer cleats, you know, like whatever. Um, but I just I can't I can't get into the like oh it's a it's a nutty citrusy aroma with with hints of oak and and just slight overtones of an anise scented as though it had been baked in the sun, but for not for like I can't do that. Yeah. Can you do intensity though? Will you be able to like because there's well, fragrant well, plants that like you can smell from a mile yeah. away, and then there's fragrant plants where you got to shove your face into it. Yeah, them. yeah. Like uh, I, to me, it doesn't count if I got to stick my nose in the in the plant. Like that doesn't oh, count. Oh no, yeah. really? Yeah, that doesn't. It's count. It's got a waft. A, a little bit, because otherwise okay. I won't notice it. Because you know me, I'm I'm oafish and will not notice things unless they're shoved <laughs> in my face. Um, so I, I that that aroma has to has to hit me. Um, okay. not, you know, like even like not just like like one of the plants I'm not going to do that I've done a bunch of times before and talked about as fragrance is, is clethro, which I can smell from across the garden. True. Uh, right. Which and to me that's great, but um, I, I don't need something to be that strong. But if if you have to like stick your nose in it and inhale deeply, you know, as though you're trying to ingest this flower, and then you get the slight, um, you know. Uh, wonderful notes of fragrance that that to me doesn't count you know yeah i guess i'm with you on that i mean it's okay if you like need to lean down and like take a little sniff to really get what the yeah. fragrance is but yeah if you have to shove your face in it that's no good also i gotta say what didn't make my list and i'm getting super picky here is stuff that's super overpowering like lilies asiatic lilies I can't stand. It gives me a headache for some reason. They're so yeah. intense. They're such a large flower. They put out so much aroma. I'm not a fan. Um, and that's outside as well as, you know, as a cut flower inside. I, I just, yes, don't send would, me lilies. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that, that was something that didn't make my list either, you know. Um, and then I stuck to more of like the sweet fragrances. I, I did think about... Something like lavender. Well, you know, you know. Okay, so there's a difference between a lily and a lavender scent. Yes. Okay. So obviously, you haven't seen my <laughs> plant. You haven't seen my plant list. No, you didn't. You kept it a secret. Okay, so we're pulling back the curtain. Usually, we email each other our list so we can, you know, kind of come up with some witty comment to throw back at each other. But you left me hanging. Uh, well, you know, I only email you my list uh, to say ha. I've done it. 
<laughs> if it's done. And so, uh, to, you know, if I'm first, I will email it to you. But if I'm okay. second, if I'm second, I don't bother because I, I can't be first. So there's no there's no reason to to email it to. Me. And then I just I just have to make sure that I'm not doing the same plants as you. But I do have a lavender on my list. So okay, well, why, I'm going to force your hands then and make you talk about a lavender first because that was something that was on my list and I wanted to do it. And then I thought, mm, I don't know about that fragrance. So go ahead. What lavender so, did you go with? Well, well, I just went with with good old Hidcoat um, hmm. English lavender, uh, which is Lavandula angustifolia Hidcoat. Mm-hmm. Um, it's. I don't think it's. I have heard that there are other lavenders that are more fragrant, but I I haven't grown them, and I couldn't find a picture of them. So. Um, this is, this is, this is one that I've, that I've grown and, uh, have a picture of. So, um, you know, hit coat, we, I think we all know what a lavender looks like. It's that, yeah. uh, sort of upright, um, bushy thing with the wonderful gray green foliage, um, to it gets, you know, two and a half feet tall and wide, um, maybe three in, in warmer environments. Um, but this, and hit coat has a, a deeper purple, flower to it. So I was growing uh, Hidco and Munstead, uh, probably the two most common cultivars of lavender next to one another in like a big mass. And I couldn't remember which was which, you know, I'm like, oh, I, I'm supposed to know which one's which. And so one day I, you know, I went back and researched and, and Hidco um, ha- has, the, has the darker, deeper purple flowers, whereas uh, Munstead's more blue. So I just remembered deep purple coat, deep purple coat. So coat, hid coat has deep purple. Oh, okay, uh, and, and, so, and so that just sticks in my head, deep purple coat, deep purple coat. Being who I am, I should have gone something with the band deep purple. You right, know, something, very, something like that's that. where I but, thought you were I, going. I, I, I didn't, and it just, it just happened to be like the one thing that I could remember was deep purple coat, deep purple coat. <laughs> um, maybe because all I can think of with Munstead is mustard, and it, it that wouldn't work. Um, so anyway, th- this has, you know, it had, I think everybody I'm so knows. lost. Everybody knows what lavender looks like. And mm-hmm. I think everybody knows what lavender smells like because it's such a common fragrance in things like soaps. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and so this is, this is one of the stronger um, uh, uh, aromatic uh, lavenders like this. And it's just, it's just a wonderful smell. It's, it's, a, it's maybe because it's so um, associated with, 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 uh, you know, soaps and, and, you know, washing that uh, it just has a clean smell to me mm, um, yeah. and, it, and it turns out that the the latin name comes from uh the the word to wash which is lavare and we have lavandula or something like that um huh. so because the romans used to you know use it to wash with and in fact the ancient egypts uh, ancient, uh, the ancient egyptians used to use it um you know in their bathing or cleansing rituals whatever they are um <laughs> So you know, like, like I, I don't know, fact. I, I don't know if they took baths or not. Um, so I mean, it's 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 that classic of a fragrance, and and I like when I said, oh, fragrance plant. What am I going to do? Well, you got to do a lavender. Um, hmm. They're they're just wonderful. And if you've ever had the pleasure of being at a lavender farm when they're in, oh. when it's in bloom, it's like oh, amazing. Um, it's it, the 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 smell is nice enough and noticeable enough that even I get it. Um, but there's, there's just something sunny about the fragrance and they're not, they're not too hard to grow. So full sun. Really? Yes. Yes. And I'm okay. surprised that you don't, you don't, you don't have any growing on your hill because they just need full sun and good I drainage. Do. Yeah. So, so with that, and you can't let the, you know, here in the Northeast, you can't let the leaves like, like the fall leaves from the trees gather mm-hmm. around the base because this is a Mediterranean plant, likes it, likes it warm and dry. Uh, so that the drier you can make it without it being like a desert, you know, mm-hmm. um, just that good drainage, the good sharp drainage um, and, and full sun, um, they do just fine. I mean, I've seen wonderful specimens up up in Maine, you know, in the center of Maine um, doing just fine. It's um, a pH thing for me because so they have I, particular pH needs. And what, and what is that pH need? Uh Oh crap. <laughs> well, does, 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 so, does it need to be acidic or acidic or alkaline or neutral? Like what does it need to be? Like which end? When you when you add a bunch of lime, it makes the soil alkaline, right? Yes. It needs alkaline soils. 
And I think that's where I fail, which would make sense because I do have really acidic soil, which in the Northeast, we tend to have more acidic soils anyway. And I think that that's where I fail. Now, on my on my hill, on my hospital hill, full sun, sharp drainage, you know, but very, very acidy soil. So they don't do awesome. They do okay. And the, my, my other knock against lavender, and I really don't have, I love lavender. I wish I could grow it, is... I get flummoxed with the pruning. After a certain point in time, you go three or four years with a lavender plant, it gets super, super woody. And I don't know if I should have been doing some pruning prior to that so it doesn't get really, really woody. And then I feel like I cut too far into the plant and then it just ends up being this stubby, woody monstrosity. It just never looks like it did the the first three years. So I almost feel like it's one of those plants of plant it for three years. It looks beautiful, rip it out and then replant it again. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a, um, there's a wonderful website called uh, finegardening.com and they have an article on there. Those guys are great. Uh, they're great. I, um, I highly recommend that them. Article. Uh, I mean, it's older than sunshine, that article. And I follow that article, but I do feel like it's just lavender is very challenging for it to look. And maybe that's my expectations to want it to look the same as it does for its first three years of just like beautiful, new, you know, supple growth. It's just never going to be that way. It eventually ages into a different kind of plant. And, and maybe that's my expectations. Hey, you know, we, we all age into something different. You know, <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> you know so uh, that's all right. So, so, so hit, hit me with something that's better than lavender. Well, so I just, you know, that's funny because you, you know, I forced your hand, but I made you go with a, a classic. And to me, whenever someone says, I want to plant a fragrant plant. What should I plant? I always go to my classic is the Korean spice viburnum. And so that's viburnum carlisi. Um, It's zones four to eight. That is my favorite viburnum. I know that I pick on viburnums because sometimes they all say, oh, every viburnum is fragrant. And I go, some of them smell like cat pee. And we have that disagreement. Uh, Korean spice is does not smell like cat pee. It is the most beautiful. I think it's more like a kind of a vanilla fragrance to it, maybe with a little bit of baby powder mixed in. Um, it is something that you smell. <laughs> no, it is. I, I I feel like I'm doing a good job describing this fragrance. It's a little vanilla y baby powder. Um, you do smell it from a distance, but it's not super, super overpowering. This shrub gets to be four to six feet tall and wide. It's slower growing. Um, It's got beautiful silver bark. It comes out with these super uber shiny leaves that almost looks like you sprayed like wax on top of them. Um, But then in mid to late spring, it gets these clusters. The the flower shape is actually umbel shaped, but it's made up of all these teeny tiny little trumpets that come out. The buds are really, really bright pink. And then when it the flower opens, that umbel opens completely, it's white. So you kind of get this whitish pink color to it. And they're large too. I mean, I would say that each flower is maybe twice the size of a golf ball. And the shrub gets totally covered with them. Um, and you really can see them too because the foliage is still starting to really unfurl. So, you know, the foliage isn't obstructing the flowers, but um, it's just a beautiful, fragrant, lovely shrub that tolerates partial shade. You can put it in full sun to partial shade. Um, And I I would say another great thing about Korean spice viburnum is that it gets great fall color. It kind of turns into this yellow, orange, red. uh, It reminds me of sassafras when it starts to change color in the fall. It's really, really brilliant fall color, which is something that, you know, you know, when I was you know, researching the the nitty gritty about the shrub, you never see anybody say anything about fall color. And then I started second guessing, is my shrub the only one that gets fall color? But then I saw a couple of other things that said fall color. But um, yeah, just really a tough shrub, really a nice shrub, and just a classic, just a very classic, fragrant plant that I really feel like most gardens should have. And with a zonal range of four to eight, you know, there's a lot of contenders there, people who can plant this. I got uh, 
I know that the title of the show is Let's Argue About Plants, but there's nothing to argue about with a Korean spice viburnum. You know, when it comes to fragrance, yeah, you said classic. Um, like that that would be on pretty much every gardener's top 10 list of, of fragrant plants, especially fragrant shrubs. Um, just, a, just a great plant um, that I'm not growing for some reason. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but like you said, a lot of the, a lot of the, the um, viburnums are fragrant. So they are, and they're, they are. There, there are so many good reasons to grow so many different viburnums. Um, yeah. So for fragrance, um, Korean spice is, is probably at the top of the list. It is. My list, at least. And yours. So if we're talking about quintessential fragrant plants, um, we have to talk about peonies. Uh, I'm surprised ah. that, I mean, your, your, your list is only four plants long, so you couldn't get to everything. But uh, again, like lavender, if you're talking about fragrance, I think there has to be a peony um, on the list. Mm-hmm. And I'm fortunate enough to to have in my garden um, a, a, a peony whose name is Eden's Perfume. Which, oh, cool. Yeah, it, that has to be fragrant, right? It's mm-hmm. with a name like Eden's Per. They had to give it that name uh, for some reason. And this is this is one that I got at, uh, it was a leftover from, you know, um, the late great uh, Super Cool Plant Sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was surprised. I remember ordering it because I'm like, something called Eden's Perfume is going to sell out. And there was one left after the, the show. And like, even after the employee sale, there was there was still one left, so it it somehow <laughs> magically made its way into my garden, um, and so last year was the first year that it bloomed. You know, so I, I planted it probably two years ago, and then this okay. this past year it, it bloomed, and it it was it was so fragrant. Like we've already talked about how I I need to be like I will not notice a fragrance unless it's you know right in front of me, and this one it, it's not strong. Like I didn't smell it from far away, but I was probably you know. Uh, poking around in in the area around the base of it, and I smelled this wonderful smell. And so, uh, not only did I notice the perfume, but I did another thing that I don't always do. I never do. I actually cut f- two flowers and brought them into the house. I never do that uh, because they smelled so wonderful, and I wanted my wife, you know, to to experience my brilliance as a gardener for having you know uh, nurtured this this wonderful uh, aroma. Um, and she, she wouldn't go outside to smell it. Um, so I had to bring it uh, inside to, uh, and that's the picture that you'll see if anybody goes to the website or, or is viewing this on YouTube, you see the picture, that's a picture of my Eden's perfume in a vase in my house. Um, Aww. Steve, yeah. are you going to leave us and become a professional floral designer? No, because you'll notice it's not with anything. It is one <laughs> stem in, in a vase. And that's, that's, that's probably as good as I can get, you know? <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, it's, it, it smells, uh, wonderful. Um, I, I, someone said it smells like a rose and then, which made me think, well, doesn't a rose smell like a peony? I don't know. Like who's, who's to say, um, I also, I also read somewhere that this is the most fragrant of all peonies. Um, oh. I, I, I do not know that to be true. Um, but even if it's up there in contention and someone could say that with a straight face must mean that it's pretty darn fragrant. Um, so it, 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 it's, it's a peony. So what does it look like, Steve? Uh, yeah. it, 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 ha- it has, it has those light pink double blooms. So it's this big okay. puff ball of, uh, of petals and big, because it has this big puff ball of blooms, um, uh, it's probably going to flop. I didn't give it a chance. I staked it, which okay. to me is not that hard. Like you put the little grid over it and then, you know, mm-hmm. uh, whatever happens after that happens. Um, I've, I've done all I can at that point. Um, uh, so, so it's probably going to flop. Uh, but other than that, like no trouble with it at all. Uh, it looks like a peony, uh, two and a half feet tall and wide. They won't get to three feet. You wouldn't see a, a peony at three feet, would you? Like maybe eventually. I have like Festiva Maxima yeah. gets pretty large yeah. in my garden. All right, so, so let's say two and a half to three feet tall and mm-hmm. wide. Um, full sun, a partial shade. Mine's in partial shade. Yes. Um, a moister soil, like I would not put it in a dry area. Um, and, and those, those big flowers get to be, you know, a good six, seven inches across. So that's, it's a decent looking flower too. So like it, it makes a show, a visual show. And then there's the, the aroma. Um, uh, so, uh, I almost wish that there were more plants of these that had been left over so I could have more. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, re- I'm really waiting for it to bulk up so I can divide it and, and pop it around, you know, and then that would just be, um, It'd just be wonderful. Like you'd just be in that area and smell peony, uh, which would be great. 
It sounds almost like it, it might look a little bit like, and I didn't go on and see your photos yet online, but it sounds like Sarah Bernhardt, you know, that classic double pink. That it, it, It's a very, very, very light pink. Oh, okay. So lighter yeah. than, than Sarah yeah. Bernhardt. Okay. Because that's, that's, you know, I feel like Sarah Bernhardt and Festiva Maxima are like the peonies everybody knows. Those are like the classics. So I was trying to figure out if it looks a lot like that. So lighter. Ooh, pretty. That sounds it's, awesome. Yeah, it's, it's very, and I think if I had left it on the plant, like the pink might've gotten a little deeper. Okay. But, you know, when I cut it off, it was, it was um, like blushed pink, you know. Yeah. Um, very, very faint, but definitely not white. Um, okay. Certainly pink, but but so mild, so soft, and just a, a wonderful fragrance um, that it, when you grow it, you can describe whether it smells like vanilla or powder. Or <laughs> I know, yeah, roses I mean, you, or whatever. You know. you know how much I love peony, so I'm surprised I haven't I haven't hopped on that one's bandwagon yet. But okay, uh, Eden's, and that was Eden's perfume. Yes, as in the perfume of the Garden of Eden. Okay. Uh, Eden's perfume. And okay. really, like, like if you can grow a peony, you should be growing them. Like if you if you live within zones three to eight, because that's where this this is mm-hmm. hardy, uh, and you have a sunny spot, you really should be growing a peony. I mean, they're yeah. wonderful plants. I know they're not native and they don't, you know, support ecosystems, but um, the, the joy that they bring, you know, is can't be measured. They're pretty awesome. They are. Well, all right. So Eden's perfume doesn't leave much to the imagination on whether or not it's fragrant. And neither does my next plant, which is Fragrant Delight Heliotrope. Um, th- so for us, this is an annual. For most folks, it's an annual. It zones 10 to 11. And the reason that I picked this is that I think it's a great container plant. It's a great container plant for partial to pretty much full shade. Um, the heliotrope doesn't need that much sun. It actually crisps up on the edges of its leaves when it's in too much sun. Um, evenly moist soil, but get to the plant, D. All right, so the leaves are a dark, dark green, very crinkly, a little bit of fuzziness to them. And then it gets this beautiful... Oh man, I'm terrible at flower shapes. I guess it's loose clusters of these deep purple flowers that have teeny tiny little white centers to them. Um, So, and it's really deep purple, super deep purple. I mean, we're talking, you know, royal purple, not lavender, not bluish purple, really, really dark. Um, And the fragrance on these heliotrope flowers is to me has always smelled like root beer. It's, it smells like you cracked open an A&W root beer. You're making yourself a float. It's the middle of summer. What could be better? And it's delightful. It's really, really great. Um, is, this, is, is that, is that really a smell you want though? Root beer? Yeah. What is wrong with you? You don't like I, I root don't know. Beer? Well, 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 le- well, let me ask you this. Would you wear a root beer scented perfume? Not everything that would, smells would you, good you would want to wear as a perfume. Well, well, would you use like root beer scented? So, do you have root beer scented anything? A candle. Like, I would do a do? root beer scented candle. Yeah. Okay. All right. I would do a root beer okay. scented. I mean, yeah. like confections. Like uh, you are the king of baked goods. Right. Do, would you say that a baked good smells good? Yes. Yes. Would you wear a baked good scented perfume? <laughs> you, you know, you know the answer. Of course, I would. <laughs> it, it, right. If I could smell like a donut instead of looking like one, you know, I would totally do that. Yeah. All right. So that you, that you, totally that, backfired on yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Like Steve, you smell so sugary and sweet. Like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I uh, I will say yes, I would wear a root beer scented okay. perfume. Yeah. I think that I just love it. It's a great smell. It's a great smell. Some people say it's more vanilla-y, but I think it there, it's more vanilla y, but I think it smells like root beer to each his own. Is there any um, baby powder in that vanilla? No baby powder. There, no baby no, powder. No, whiff, no whiffs of baby powder. No, okay. now I'm going ahead to see if any of my other yeah. plants smell like baby powder. Um, so anywho, uh, hummingbirds love this plant. It's really, really interesting because it's not your typical, you know, uh, tubular, red-shaped flower, that hummingbird. But they love it. They absolutely adore it. It gets to be about a foot and a half tall. Um, I think that's stretching it as a container plant and grown as an annual during the season, maybe 12 
inches tall. You know, it's it's a moderate, nice, bushy plant for you. Um, it's long bloomed too. So it starts, you know, like a lot of annuals, it starts in, in mid to late spring when you plant it. And with deadheading, it will continue to bloom throughout the rest of the summer for you. Um, I think I used to pair it all the time in, in my shady containers with uh, fuchsias and then, you know, some foliage plants, but it, it that dark purple color really tones down the obnoxiousness of fuchsias because, you know, fuchsias can, can be a little gaudy with their bright magenta and purple dangly flowers. And, you know, there's different colors, but they're all very, very loud and bawdy. And I think uh, heliotrope, this fragrant delight heliotrope, really puts those guys in check and you can make a, a nice, you know, non-garish looking container with heliotrope and, and fuchsia paired. And you've just created a hummingbird treat right there if you've got fuchsia and heliotrope in, in a container. So uh, that's Fragrant Delight Heliotrope, long bloomed summer annual. If you live in zones 10 and 11, Florida, I guess you could grow it year round. <laughs> But other than that, it's, it's a great plant that you will often find in the nursery. There's a lot of different cultivars of heliotrope. All of them smell delightful and delicious. There's a pink one. There's a white one. Um, I would only say with the white one, when the flowers fade, they turn brown. So it's kind of ugly. So I would opt for any of the purple, the purple uh, colored ones. But yeah, so if you like the smell of A&W root beer, get yourself a heliotrope. So I always pass by heliotrope when shopping for annuals because I'm worried that it's not going to amount to much, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like it's not going to bulk up or anything because I've, the few times I've grown it, um, I think the last time I grew it, I actually grew it in the ground, you know, mm -hmm. and annuals in the ground, you have to water and feed, mm -hmm. you have to do it in containers too, but it's easier for me in containers. Uh, and it just kind of, it just kind of sat there, you know, it yeah. did okay, but it was nothing special. Um, so, so I tend to, pass, how big do they get? Like what am it, I gets, get it gets to be about a, a foot and a half tall, but for me, it's always been about a foot tall and maybe 10 inches wide. You know, it makes a nice kind of moundy and it's very dense foliage. You know, it's multi branch, so it's very, very dense. Then you get these, you know, teardrop shaped leaves that are, you know, kind of normal leaves, but they're really, really crinkly. So it's good texture too. And so, so what happens with the flowers? Like, how many am I going to get? Am I going to get one and it's going to sit there all year? Or do no. I dead head and get more? Or like, what's the, it keeps no. producing flowers. It keeps producing flowers, kind of these, almost these umbels of flowers, um, you know, these loose, they're like loose clusters of flowers that are kind of dotted all around the outside of the plant. Um, like, you know, kind of purple clouds. But as they start to fade, I mean, they last for a long time. Each individual flower cluster lasts for a long time and eventually it starts to brown out. You just cut it out and it produces, and each place you cut it, two new stems because it then produces two new flower clusters on those two new stems. So, so do you pinch it? Do you pinch it? Yeah. Yeah. The flowers back and you can pinch it right from the start too, kind of like coleus to get it to be a little bit bushier and bulkier. If you, you know, if you see a spindly plant if you get a spindly plant like a lot of annuals do um yeah it takes to pinching really really well it can be overwintered as a house plant too apparently i've worked at nurseries that do that but not in this house i'd kill it <laughs> so um I, I think i will definitely add that to my containers this summer and uh and stock up on a and w yeah. or barks barks is my my go-to uh root beer yeah. well to each his own this say no except yeah. in the, except in the garden uh, you know because when when somebody says here smell this and it's in the garden it's usually a good smell you know it's it's not the cat pee plants you know but usually like here smell this it's like they want to determine if the meat's gone bad you know or the milk is chunky yeah yeah um yeah I'm going to rip they, that they, off they, for the intro for the web page for this they they, they, they want to they, they want to see if something's wrong but smell mm. this smell this mm. yeah this is okay <laughs> You know, does this seem to be washed here? Smell this, you know, like that, that, that kind of thing. Oh, no, so, you know, wash that, you know. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. But, but in, in, in the garden, it's different. Here, it smell is. this. Like, you know, it's, yeah. It's the inflection. So we, we've got a thing going with names that just, you know, tell you right away that a plant is fragrant. And mm -hmm. I'm going to break that streak. 
Um, oh, good. Okay, hold on. Then I'll I'll hop off of that and break okay. it too. Go ahead. Well, you you can return to it. I mean, it's we're very fluid here <laughs> in our formats here. Um, so are. this plant's name is, and, and maybe this this hints at fragrance. I just do not know. Uh, but the plant's name is David. Hey, maybe David was a sweet sweet smelling guy. Like we we don't know. Um, no, because if you it, call somebody smelly, that no. No, if but I like, said, like Steve, you smell. Steve, you're fragrant. That would not be a oh, compliment. Oh, oh, but come on, we we know the smell of people, like the the smell of our of our love's hair, you know, or like well, that's the smell uh, well, of the how, shampoo. Well, like you know, like oh oh, I I missed him so much. I you know I took his sweatshirt and just clutched it and smelled it because it smelled of him, you know, or like oh the the the, the 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 you know ew. So you're you're saying you you have never had a significant other who had a particular scent that just yes, know, but it was it was the cologne or the you know or the the fa- like, the fabric softener, not yeah. their essence. But, but, no, that's uh, bo. Ugh. Not not really. Okay, um, <laughs> we've had we've had we've had different experiences with people. Uh, okay, um, that's because okay. Never mind. I'm gonna leave it. Anywho, Go ahead. Anywho, anywho. <laughs> David is David. a is a lovely fragrant fellow. He could be. Um, he you know um, he could just be a, a great guy. Um, but somebody named a phlox after him, a garden mm. phlox. So David Garden Phlox, which is phlox paniculata. David, um, and and you know whoever David is, like I'm sure you're a wonderful guy. We don't mean to. We're not making fun of you at all. Um, <laughs> I have uh, um, I have only positive things to to think about you because the plant that bears your name is wonderful. It has mm. these. Um, you know, Fox has those long panicles in the name uh, of flowers. These are pure white, you know, like tall cone cones of flowers. Um, and th- they're wonderfully fragrant. Uh, to me, they smell like summer. Um, mm. I know that that's not, you know, root beer mixed with, you know, hints of baby breath. And, you know, like, I, I don't know. But it just to me, like when I smell that, I'm like, oh, it, it's, it, it, it's some oh, ba- baby. What's a baby powder? Um, baby breath. Oh, that smells great. It smells like baby breath. I meant baby's breath. Like milk and spit up. Yay. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Babies smell wonderful. We all know this. Babies smell wonderful. Not, not, it's not, it's not all poop and throw up. Like if you smell a freshly washed baby, uh, we, we all know that that's just, it's just one one of the best smells on the planet. Maybe Uh, not their breath, but yes, them. (laughs) Go ahead. So anyway, uh, David smells great. Um, Pure white flowers, uh, nice and big, uh, blooms in summer, like three to four feet tall, maybe half mm-hmm. as wide. Mm-hmm. Uh, full sun to partial shade. I would go with more full mm-hmm. sun. But the thing about David is not only is it fragrant, but it it is mildew free, powdery mildew. Mm-hmm. It's what it. This is how I came to know this plant as it. Oh, this is the one that doesn't get powdery mildew. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if it was the first one because there's a whole bunch out there now that don't get powdery mildew. Uh, but this, to me, this is the first one that, like, hey, you have probably powdery mildew on, on your flocks. Grow David, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, you know, he comes with these these wonderfully fragrant uh, flowers. So, um, just a just a great plant. Um, average, well drained soil. Not hard to grow. Um, in, in the test garden, we have had the deer come by and nip off the flowers. Um, but to to me, they they sort of eat it the way I I eat pretzels. You know, like I don't, I don't reach for the pretzels, but if somebody puts them in front of me, I'm going to eat them, you know? So like, it's not, it's not, it's not number, it's not like a hosta, you know, for for them, but they'll, (laughs) they'll, you know, they're, they're they're browsing around. They'll, they'll take a few nips off the, um, and they don't chow it to the ground. They just eat the good parts. Um, Yeah. So, so, so like, like my son in a donut would just eat the chocolate off the top and not eat the donut, you know, like, there you go. You you can't do that. You know, you have to grow out of that kid at some point. Um, So that's, that's how the deer treat flocks. Uh, But if you don't have deer, you, 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 this is another plant that should, should be grown if you have a sunny spot. Um, just a wonderful plant. It, it looks like summer. It smells like summer. I think um, you hit on it there that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of mildew resistant or mildew um, that have mildew resistant phloxes out there. And I think most of them have David as a parent in the breeding because that is, that's the quintessential phlox that doesn't get mildew. Um, you know, uh, there's been so many new ones introduced lately and it's like you read the fine print and you find out that 
David was a parent or a, it was a chance seedling in a field of David. So yeah, that's, that's a good one. That is a good one. And, and, you know, a lot of plants get named after a lot of people. And sometimes the plants aren't very good and you feel bad for the person, but David, David, David should be proud. He should be. Whoever named that for him did, did him right. Because it's, it's a, it's fragrant, it's uh, pretty, it's disease free. It's led to a bunch of other great plants. Like what, Mm -hmm. you know, what more could you ask in a, in a plant namesake? Okay, so I'm going to pick up on your deer that or plants that deer like to munch on, but I'm going to raise you one. So they browse on flocks, but they completely annihilate hostas. But I wanted to talk about a fragrant hosta, which is super crazy and weird because nine times out of 10, I cut the flowers off of my hostas because I think they're ugly and they don't add to the plant at all. You grow a hosta for that beautiful lush foliage you really don't grow it for. The flowers. However, I grow guacamole hosta uh, initially for the foliage. It's beautiful, giant leaves. It's a two foot tall, two foot wide uh, hosta. So not a giant, not a mini. Has a gorgeous dark green rim to the leaf and then a beautiful kind of chartreuse green center. So, you know, it kind of looks like an avocado. Dark green on the outside, light green on the inside. But it gets these scapes of tubular white large flowers that are incredibly fragrant and really, really nicely fragrant. Um, Just sweet. I I would just describe it as sweet, you know, kind of like a a frosting or something along those lines. But just, just to be clear, it doesn't smell like guacamole. No, it doesn't. Oh, okay. It okay. doesn't. Okay. Which, uh, you know, I mean, I would be intrigued if it did. But no, it's named guacamole because of the, the color of the leaves. But I always noticed that it had fragrant flowers. And it wasn't ever really touted as, you know, one of the fragrant hostas. But then I looked and I researched it a little bit and found out that it's a um, one of its parents was fragrant bouquet hosta, which is the one hosta everybody says grow for the flowers not the foliage so it kind of combines all the best things fragrant bouquet just has a plain green leaf to it so that's not all that exciting so with guacamole you have a really fragrant flower and you have really cool foliage so this is something that i think is is worthy of making a fragrant plant list Zones three to nine, like most hostas, yes, the deer will eat it. Yes, I have herds of deer. I, you know, I practice barrier planting. I put things that will deter them from getting to the hostas in front. And, you know, I just kind of roll with it when they do munch on them and try and do some, you know, deer spray and such when I need to. But for the most part, they leave, you know, a few of my treasured hostas alone. And uh, this is a great, great hosta that I don't cut the flowers off of. And hummingbirds love it too. Tubular flowers, people don't usually talk about hummingbirds and hostas, but hummingbirds actually love the flowers of hostas. So um, when people mention that a hosta is fragrant, I generally ro- roll my eyes because <laughs> I think it's a type of thing that you know you have to stick your nose into to smell. Mm-hmm. And we said at the top of the show that we weren't going to have any of these. So this isn't no. something like that. No. And, you know, I'm I'm not a scientist, so I don't know the, the mechanics behind this, but this hosta I particularly smell from a distance in the evening. Now, I don't know if that's because, you know, the air is denser and calmer and fragrance tends to, you know, adulterate the air a bit more in the evening hours, but that's when I really notice it. Yeah. So that's that's an, an interesting thing uh, that happens with a lot of plants. And we should do like a, a real quick lightning round of things that are fragrant at night. You've got you know, night blooming cereus, uh, brugmansia, nicotiana. Yeah. These are all things that are wonderfully fragrant, but they, Jasmine. They're, all, they're only fragrant at night. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they should also be on the list. I mean, the list of fragrant plants is just huge. Um, and and th- those what we just mentioned are some of the ones that are fragrant um at night and if i could remember what i said i would repeat the list but i can't so um (laughs) yeah but guacamole hosta falls into that category and i uh, you know i'm sure it's fragrant during the day but really when i notice it and i don't have to stick my face into it is in the evening hour so you know hey bonus great foliage great flowers hummingbird plant why not 
All right, Steve, hit me with your last fragrant plant or the last one on your list. Well, it's it's funny how we've been we've been sort of picking up on what it, each other's been putting down because you said hummingbirds and tubular mm-hmm. flowers, so I'm coming back with a honeysuckle. <gasps> so oh. um, I, I grow this wonderful honeysuckle. Uh, it's called Magnifica, uh, Lonicera sempervirens magnifica, uh, zones four to eight. So it's Magnifica coral honeysuckle is the, is the name. Um, so, so I guess the species probably has the, um, and how this one differs from the species, species, I have no idea, but this one gets red to red, orange, um, tubes of flowers, you know, they're kind of in those little, uh, like upside down fan sprays or whatever you would call them. Like, uh, um, I don't know how to, um, describe what they look like a honeysuckle flower. That's these red, orange tubes that, uh, you know, uh, hummingbirds adore, like, I swear, hummingbirds come from, like, the next state to, to come find this thing because it didn't have a ton of hummingbirds. And then I planted this thing. It bloomed, and all of a sudden there were hummingbirds there um, to, to the point where you kind of have to duck sometimes. Like, you know, you're standing, <laughs> you're standing there, and you hear this, you know, like, right by your ear, and you're like, what the heck? You know, and it's like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a hummingbird. Um, and and th- they're shaped, the flowers are shaped, um, like, I, I, they remind me of those things that you, those party favors that you go, you know, and it, it, uh, it unrolls, you know, like, and, 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 you know, like, that's what, that's what the flower reminds me of. Uh, either that or, um, if you remember from the Brazil Olympics, everyone was blowing on those vuvuzelas, yes, those long vroom. things like that. Yeah. yeah like that's, they kind of look like that. <laughs> um, but just a, a wonderful, sweet fragrance to this, um, this vine, um, uh, gets to gross, I guess, to only be about seven feet tall. Mine's just this big mass of, of, uh, of tendrils or whatever you, you call them. Um, and then you get red fruit for the birds in fall, which I've seen for like, you know, a day and a half and the birds, you know, descend upon it and they disappear. Um, but so, you know, you get hummingbirds, you get birds, you get fragrance for yourself. Um, I get, uh, a little bit of privacy cause it's blocking out some of my neighbors. Uh, mm-hmm. that's what we've got going on. Um, but, and it's, it's a native honeysuckle. It's native to, uh, most of the Eastern United States, um, as opposed to a, a lot of the, um, exotic uh honeysuckles are invasive um so this is a good one to grow full sun i guess you can grow in partial shade i have it in full sun i would guess partial shade you get less flowers and maybe spindly or growth and it it, it heading off towards the sun um but just a a wonderful easy to grow vine that is native and enjoyed by wildlife say the name again for me it is magnifica magnifica Mm -hmm. coral honeysuckle uh, and it's so, Lonicera. Lon- Lonicera sempervirens. So that was, okay. oh, oh, it wants to be evergreen, uh, but it's just kind of not, you know. Okay. Um, so like in March, there are a few leaves on it that are trying to be green, but they're kind of brownish, you know, and yeah, it's, yeah. it's doing its best, but uh, it'll, it'll bounce back in another couple of weeks. Question. So Lonicera's, and I think it's usually the Asian species of Lonicera's. So maybe this one doesn't have this problem. Get powdery mildew ever seen powdery mildew on it never never nice uh, all right but, bonus. but but that doesn't that doesn't mean um that it won't get it in different circumstances it's kind of off by yeah. itself so that might help um it also i think i would have noticed um it's not like black spot on my black eyed susans which i never noticed until somebody pointed out to me so i hope you're not jinxing me here i know no 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 but yeah, I've, I've, I've never noticed it. i've never had a problem with it it's okay. it's one of those those uh plant it and and forget it kind of things Okay. Uh, like like I wayward stems or ones that look old and broken, I'll snip them back to a pair of buds. But but only when I'm like wandering around and trying to avoid you know housework that my wife wants me to do. It's like no, I, I can't. I got to go do some stuff out in the yard. No, you know mess mess about with the honeysuckle. You know, and, so. and you'll snip one branch in three hours off a honeysuckle. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, know, you, you, you have to look at it for a while and consider yeah. Yeah. which moves to make because yeah. that that cut will be permanent. You know? Yep, so um, true. So and true. I would also I would also like to um, take this um, moment to point out one of my favorite British act- actresses has the name Honeysuckle, uh, Honeysuckle Weeks from uh, Foil's War. OK, um, yeah. All right. Shout out to Honeysuckle Weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's a listener. Who I knows? Think, I hope that's her last name because I know her first name because Honeysuckle. Uh, <laughs> but now I don't remember her last name. So. Well, she was a fan until you just got her last name wrong. And eh, now, well. yeah. oh, now well. she's writing a bad review on iTunes. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm going to end it out with um, a plant that I wish I was braver to grow. Um, and if I was braver, I would grow variegated winter Daphne. 
that's Daphne, Odora, Ario, Marginata. And it's zone seven to nine. And Daphne's freak me out, man. They just freak me out because they have such a bad reputation of being so finicky and hard to grow. And I know that's not the case for all of them because, you know, I've talked to numerous horticulturists around North America who have said, oh, no, you need to try this variety. And, oh, no, the trick is, is they they just don't like to be moved, you know, and they go through transplant, you know, uh, shock and blah, blah, blah. But man, is there anything better than a fragrant Daphne? And, you know, I I see them most of the time when when I've come across this variegated winter Daphne, we have been at trade shows, you know, during during the off season. And you'll go to these trade shows. And that is one of the plants that some of the plant sellers will have or various different winter blooming Daphne's. And they're just beautiful and the fragrance is so intense asiatic lily intense but not that headachey <laughs> so really 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 lovely fragrance um and daphne's are cool they have this you know kind of these fleshy stems to them that almost make you think oh is it an edgeworthia is it you know what is that it's really cool looking it looks almost like a tropical in these waxy leaves that are yeah, kind of lance-like, skinny lance-like waxy leaves that this one is a golden edge on the outside and dark glaucous blue on the inside. Um, and then gets these really, really beautiful clusters of tiny tubular white pink flowers to them. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Korean spice viburnum only on a smaller shrub. Um, this one only gets to be, I think, two to three feet tall and wide. So a really cool plant and I really want to pull the trigger, but A, they're pricey and B, I have this feeling that I would kill it. So I'm not brave enough to ever pull the trigger and I just should because apparently Daphne breeding has gotten a lot better that not all of them are as finicky anymore as Carol Mackey or, or that, you know, that that's a classic Daphne is Carol Mackey. So this is a variegated winter Daphne zone seven to nine. Um, also I'm a little bit outside of its zonal range, so I would have to protect it. I don't know. I don't know. Why don't I, I don't know. What, how do you feel about Daphne? I'm so Uh, confused. Well, pretty much the same way, you know, like you, the, the fragrance is such that, and it's like, when you're talking about fragrant plants, somebody has to mention a Daphne. I know somebody's mentioning Daphne, you have to mention how finicky they supposedly are because like you, I refuse to pull the trigger on them. Mm -hmm. Um, I can recall uh, being up at a local nursery, shooting a whole bunch of red buds uh, and, and just saying like, what is that wonderful smell and turning and seeing this beautiful shrub? I'm like, Oh my gosh, what is it? And I saw the plant tag. It said Daphne. And I said, forget it just because it has this, this reputation for being finicky Mm -hmm. and the people who can grow it like, Oh, well, it's just about drainage or it's just about, if you get it in the right spot and it's happy, then like everything is great. But you what's know, that right spot though? Right, I like, feel, like, I feel get, like getting that right spot is you know it's like um, it's like hitting the lottery. You're like, yeah. oh well, if if you buy a winning ticket, then everything is great. Like, well, yeah, but how do you buy the winning ticket? <laughs> um, so so that's that's why I haven't um, uh, ever tried to grow a Daphne, uh, but they are. They are so tempting because they're so, well, a lot of them are so attractive with their foliage mm-hmm. and they look even better in flower and they smell great. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're a wonderful size, like the nice, you know, nice size shrub. Yeah, um, good shape, good shape to them. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, yeah. So I feel the same way. Fin- finicky reputation probably deserved because, um, you know, even, even, you know, experts we talked to are like, yeah, that's a really finicky plant. Um But so, so, like, I I just feel like maybe it was one of those plants that needed to have, you know, breeding, like, you know, plant breeders work on it a little bit because I am hearing that these newer varieties are getting hardier, you know, are are, are really coming up. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It might be my pull the trigger plant this year. I'm not sure. Stay tuned. Because everything sounds better with a British accent. Here's Peter with his thoughts on aromas. Ah, the sense of smell. Nothing conjures up memories like scent wafting to our nose. The smell of pipe tobacco, for example, 
brings me back to Sunday afternoons at my grandfather's house. And lilacs, oh, they remind me of the lost loves of my youth. And nothing can soothe like scent. Waking to the aroma of coffee and bacon is a wonderful way to start the day. Unless you're a vegetarian, of course. And what is an autumn afternoon without the smell of wood smoke to help you settle into a long evening? Fragrance is a key element in a garden. One that you will enjoy today. But who knows who else you might inspire? Perhaps someone, years from now, will catch the scent of rose or hyacinth and the memory of your garden will bloom again. Ah, uh, Steve, as soon as Peter was talking about the, the pipe smell or the tobacco smoke of his grandfather, that brought back memories. That's one of like, that's an aroma I feel like so many people can identify with. I think of my grandfather immediately. Love that smell. I don't know why. Uh, and I bet if there were a plant that smelled like uh, tobacco smoke, you would probably grow it. I probably would. Let's see if our expert grows a plant that smells like tobacco smoke. I'm Julie Lane Gay, the former owner of Quail Hollow, a nursery that specialized in climbers and perennials. And now I'm a custom propagator and garden writer in Vancouver, British Columbia. Our climate's similar to Seattle's with winters that are more wet than cold. By the thermometer, we're in zone eight. Because of our endless rain each year, we have to garden like we live in zone seven. When telling you about my favorite fragrant plants, I have to start with a confession. It took me a few years to realize I had to plant them where I could actually smell them. In my first garden, I placed that fruity scenting rose westerlin and the star jasmine along our back fence. But by early summer, I had to sidle my way through the border of billowy lavenders and spilling perennials even to get a whiff of their scent, not to mention cut a bouquet. It also took me a while to learn that some fragrances travel further than others. You can smell a sweet box from six feet away, but a Daphne from closer to two. So while slow on the uptick, I now plant my fragrant favorites where I can get up close and smarter yet, near where I park my car and my bicycle. I can now even cut a bouquet without trampling on other plants. The first of my winter flowering favorites begins in early January. It's a shrubby honeysuckle, Lonicera papusii winter beauty, with an abundance of small white tubular flowers with soft yellow anthers. You'll know it's a honeysuckle. It's hardy to zone seven, but it looks equally great in zone nine. It grows to about six feet tall, spreads three to six feet wide. In a mild winter, Lanocera papusii can be evergreen, but here the flowers start on bare branches and they flower mightily right into March when the new leaves emerge. This is the first of my bee pollinators for the season too. It's a role I've been trying to take more seriously. I have a shrubby honeysuckle by the front door in full sun and a second one in part shade, and they both flower equally well. Both get watered weekly, but they don't get any other special attention. If it's getting too big for a spot, I prune the shrubby honeysuckle just after it flowers, but I'm also grateful because it's not really necessary. Another virtue of this shrub is it acts as an excellent trellis for summer flowering clematis. So come late July, my blue clematis viticella, Prince Charles, shimmies, winds its way up to about six feet, and then it flowers all over the honeysuckle. I cut Prince Charles back to about 20 inches in November so it doesn't obscure the winter flowers. In late spring, usually end of May, my fragrant flavor is the first of my sweet peas, one called Painted Lady, which date back to 1730. It's a descendant of the equally easy and equally fragrant Cupani. Painted Lady has a bi-colored pink and white flowers, and even for a sweet pea, this fragrance is wonderfully sweet. It's spicy, just a hint of clove. I first became intrigued with Painted Lady, not because it smelled so good, but because it was flowering in partial shade, which is a rarity for sweet peas in the Pacific Northwest. I soon learned that Painted Lady was also one of the most cold-hardy, so I can plant the seeds in mid-March, and I know it won't be bothered by a late frost. They germinate easily. I soak the seeds in warm water overnight, grow up to six feet tall, and it's easy to collect the seeds for the following year. Sometimes I even get a self-sown seedling the following spring. Painted Lady thrives and suits not just a trellis on a fence, but growing in a pot on a balcony or even beautifying a vegetable garden. Showing up at a friend's door with a jar of these beauties, ideally a nice bottle of Merlot as well, is sure to win you love every time. By late June, my affections have moved on to what I think is one of the best of the hyssops, a perennial known as Agastache apricot sprite. With peach-colored flowers and triangular gray-green leaves, 
The cheerleader of silent do-gooders in me loves this plant because the intense, minty, almost root beerish fragrance comes from the leaves, not from the showy flowers. Many of the hyssops are big, floppy, almost a little coarse, but this is a smaller agastache, 18 inches tall, 12 to 15 inches across, and it's just as durable as the bigger ones. Apricot Beauty needs nothing but sunshine. With good drainage, it's hardy to zone 7, but it flowers for so long, early July to late September, that I see it as totally worth growing as an annual. If it comes back the following year, it's a bonus. Apricot Sprite is a hummingbird magnet. It's deer and slug resistant. It lasts two weeks in a vase, and the more you cut it back, the more it flowers. I plant it amidst apricot drift roses and hardy geraniums, but it's equally good in a xeriscape garden filled with euphorbias and evening primrose. It's very adaptable. In mid-August, the scented highlight of my garden is the scented bugbane, or baneberry, which used to be labeled a semisifuga, only to be given the equally weird name of actea. These are large, tall perennials, some even to six feet tall, that carry large, white, bottle brush spires, they're a bit candelabra-ish, and they carry a fantastic honey scent. Nearly all of them are hardy to zone three, but they look just as at home in zone eight, and regardless of their locale, they bloom well into late September. I always feel a little sheepish recommending Bainberry because the first time I saw it up close was when I snuck into a stranger's garden. We were living in Montana, and I'd admired this garden countless times, peered over every fence. And one very, very, very early morning, I snuck in the back garden to get a closer look. It was filled with roses and monkshood, and of course, just as I put my nose up to the amazingly fragrant baneberry, out came the pajama-clad owner, asking me what the heck I was doing and threatening to call the police. My favorite of the baneberries is Actea simplex brunette, and I like this one because not only am I a snoopy gardener, I'm a lazy one, and at four feet tall, Brunette rarely needs staking. The dark stems, someone described them once as the color of ripened plums, arise in August, and they begin flowering by later in the month. Baneberry are some of the best verticals in the late summer garden, a surprisingly unusual role, and they look as good with the panicle hydrangeas as they do amidst the large leaf hostas and the Japanese anemones. It flowers in full shade or full sun. They need to be watered, but not much else. Bugbane repels slugs, and it appeals to both the bees and the butterflies. Fragrant plants are a wonderful treat. They seem to make us slow down, take a second whiff. They make weeding far more pleasurable, and they make nearly everyone smile when their fragrance wafts through the house. Danielle, Steve, thanks so much for letting me join in today and share a few of my favorite plants. I'm so excited that she mentioned a honeysuckle. It's a species I'm not familiar with, uh, but I'm, I'm very interested in now. Um, and it shows that she just has uh, amazing taste in plants. <laughs> Why? Because she didn't pick the same plant that you picked, or in? <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't. I didn't even notice that. Like I wasn't even. <laughs> oh, sure, you did. sure you did. <laughs> <laughs>